Hello everyone. It is time for another internet costumer challenge. And today's challenge was a stash busting challenge. A bunch of us got together and looked through our stashes, picked out some fabrics that we thought the other costumer might enjoy, and then we swapped all around. The challenge then is to come up with something to make with the mystery fabrics and notions that you received in the package. The person that drew my name from the proverbial hat was Ab Frank. They have a wonderful channel here on YouTube doing cosplay and historical costuming. So definitely check out their channel. They have some really interesting videos to watch. And now I am going to dig into this wonderful box of mysteries and see what I have to work with. How cute is that? They drew a little mushroom. It's so cute. I love mushrooms. Alrighty. There is a lot in here, oh my goodness. And there are little notes, notes on things. We already have our Halloween stuff and I bought endless Halloween fabric already. Don't, I <laughs> hope you don't mind some spooky scraps. I love spooky scraps. Look at the fun little dancing skeletons. <gasps> and spooky cats. Look at the spooky cats, they're so cute. I love this. Thank you for my spooky fabrics. Ooh, oh, this is nice. Ah, oh, that's gonna be fun to use. Hmm, starting to get some ideas. So I think that for part two in this challenge, which is creating something out of the scrap box. I think our best bet's gonna be to go with this fabric. This was the longest fabric in the box, so I have a little bit more to work with than I have with the other pieces. And it's really lovely fabric. It's actually very similar to some of the kind of wackier fabrics that I've seen on extant 1890s dresses, which for some reason in the 1890s, they were like, let's do weird things. And I'm like, yeah, weird things. So I'm gonna do a little bit of Pinterest research and do some sketches and see what I can come up with that uses this fabric. I think this is gonna be fun. After some Pinterest investigation, I decided to take my main inspiration from a blue velvet princess themed dress from the Met Museum. I had a pumpkin colored velvet in the stash that I thought would work pretty well with the stash swap fabric. I started by draping the pattern in plain muslin, copying the original seam placement as best I could. So since I'm making a two-part sleeve to give myself as much sleeve as possible by, and using as little of this fabric as possible, I've been trying to find a period sleeve pattern that was broken up into two pieces, but I can't seem to find my go-to book, which is Victorian, authentic Victorian sewing patterns or something like that. I can't seem to find it, it's missing. So, but I have found a picture on my friend Liz's blog where she's holding up a, <laughs> a pattern piece to show how large it is. And so I'm going to do the very scientific thing of holding up my arms in the same way and then putting them down on the fabric. And I think that's how wide I'm gonna make my sleeve. Once I had the size of the sleeve, I marked out the basic shape with pins and just hoped for the best. The initial pattern that I draped ended at the hip, so I had to draft the skirt portion of the dress onto the fabric itself. This isn't difficult to do, and I've drafted plenty of dresses this way before, but it did cause a bit of delay because I was so worried about messing up my velvet by cutting something wrong. In the future, I'll probably just create a full pattern rather than a partial one. So I think I'm ready to start cutting out dress panels. I have been sitting here 
and staring at the fabric for about four hours and just decided we're gonna live dangerously and go in here with half a pattern and no mock-up and cut the dress directly out of the fabric. We'll see how that goes. The lower half of the sleeve was a basic trapezoid shape created using my arm measurements. It was drafted directly onto scrap bits of the velvet before being cut out. Since the swap fabric was very lightweight and slinky, I decided to interline the upper sleeve with a bit of cotton organdy to give it some extra body. With everything finally cut out, it was time to sew this piece together. This dress is finally, finally done. Well, not completely done. I haven't added the closures down the center front in case you notice there are pins holding me in, which is kind of the constant state of all of my projects. 99% finished, but without buttons or hooks and eyes or whatever. It's gotten to the point where if I wanted to wear it, I could just finish it up real quick before an event, but I have so many projects on the plate right now that I kind of have to take this one off the mannequin and start working on something else. But I am really happy with this dress. I did not expect it to turn out this well. I kind of expected the colors to clash and not look great together, but I mean, just look at it. It's kind of awesome. So some final thoughts on this dress. Um, the swap fabric really, really likes to fray. There is already a bit on the center front bodice where it's starting to fray and pull away from the seam. So that's gonna have to be addressed before I can actually wear this out anywhere. If I had planned things out a little bit better, I probably would have interfaced all of the front panels of the gold fabric so that it would be a little sturdier, but as it is, I'm not gonna take this dress apart just to do that. So we'll find some way to reinforce that in the future. But yeah. Another 1890s dress in the closet and I love it and I hope that you guys enjoyed the process. I'm sorry I didn't film as much as I should have but I got to the point where I just wanted this thing to be done. If you enjoyed today's video please hit that like button below and if you want to see more sewing adventures, costuming events, and other historical costuming goodness please be sure to hit that subscribe button as well and I will see you next time. Bye!